ng konti para sa itang ibigyan na natin. Since the visionary EO51 was promulgated, market penetration of infant formula is at a low 7%. I have issued these statistics and I want to be challenged. 7% is all the penetration of commercial infant formula in this market. Sitio San Roque in Barangay Bagong Pag-asa is one of the poorest and most populous communities in Quezon City. Like poverty, disease is common here. Two years ago, eight people died of dengue in San Roque. There are children with serious health problems. Many are suffering from respiratory infections, chronic malnutrition, and diarrhea. <laughs> Households here have as many as eight children whom their parents can barely feed from what they earn as vendors, pedicab drivers, or street sweepers. Kasi ang iba tamad, tapos ang iba din. Aywan, bakit ayaw nang pinatamad kasi balik sa ano, center kasi may, ang iba maraming anak. Walang mag-aalaga sa... Yet in many cases, when a baby is born, parents spend precious pesos on powdered milk they obviously cannot afford. Conditions in San Roque are not exactly ideal for bottle feeding. Water here is sourced from communal faucets or from leaky water pipes haphazardly laid out in narrow alleys. In urban poor communities such as San Roque, contaminated drinking water is a cause of illness among children. Even if they know they cannot afford infant formula. And despite the lack of clean water needed to prepare baby milk, mothers here are not inclined to breastfeed. They willingly spend what little money they have to bottle feed. <laughs> Katulad ng gatas ng ina daw po, yan ang inaano sa TV. Dibawa, mga limang buwan, pito. Pag wala na silang may bili, dito na. Pabili nga. Pag limang buwan o apat, pag hindi na nila kaya, lalo na pag mahinto ng trabaho, na nila kaya, magkano'n ito, sinusubukan namin. Ano naman? Okay naman sila. Magkano naman yan? Pakita mo na. 22. 22 pesos. Don't believe. 
believe it when they tell you that you are that mother who cannot breastfeed. No? You'll hear that again and again in advertisements, no? that for the mother who cannot breastfeed, don't believe that that's you. That's a very, very rare mother. You can still latch your baby on within the first hour or so. You have to it has been drilled into people's minds that breast milk is best for babies. Breastfeeding also strengthens the bond between mother and child, does not cost a single centavo, and can even prevent mothers from getting pregnant again too soon. Yet many Filipino mothers disregard these benefits in the face of aggressive advertising and promotions by milk companies. Today, the culture of breastfeeding is fast disappearing in the Philippines. Wala pong check up yung nanay, walang kulang sa vitamina, sa tamang pagkain. Lock sa vitamin C. Sa taon na po, ang dadalawa na. Plato. Ang pinadidis na yung nido. Nido na po. Alam mo, mas maganda yung mala. Pidiasure. Yung apo ko, pidiasure nga namin. Yung pinakamaliit na lata, 300 plus. Pidiasure. Yun ang ano. Hindi po tayo. Ay, hindi na ko Inborn? Inborn niya ba yan? Ano po yung... Di ba, ipiniin po talaga. Ano gatas? Birbran? Birbran? Ano? Alaska? Ay, naku lalo yan. Birbran, Alaska. Grabe. Ano? Hanggang four months lang. Napusunod namang Birbran. Kung may ibang gatas yung... Lalo na yung may ano. Ipacheck na po. Ano tawag? Yung may pribayo na gatas ba? Yung may pribayo siya. Tapos yung ang powder. Under Executive Order 51, also known as the Philippine Milk Code, the health care system cannot be used to promote infant formula. Tapos yung, di ba yung nido sa Nestle din yun? May pribayo din yun. Yet there's been very poor compliance with the law. Not just among health workers, but also health institutions. Right next door to Sitio San Roque is a government-owned children's hospital. Where promotional products from milk companies can be found in strategic locations. Like Barangay Health Workers, the hospital and its personnel receive giveaways from agents of milk companies or med reps. A practice which is also prohibited under EO 51. Oo, hindi mo yan may wasan yung mga med rep. Meron talaga yan. Madalasan pumupunta sila doon sa main. Pero at least kami taga-taga health. Ihirap naman bastusin namin sila. So welcome din sila sa amin. Pero at least, yung pinipresent talaga namin, breastfeeding. Breastfeeding talaga. Kaya kasi, most especially ang breastfeeding, yun ang healthy milk sa bata. Uh -huh. Majority po na midwives sa mga health center, may mga hawak na iba't ibang mga ano, brand milk formula. Oo po naman, lahat ng health center ina-approach. Yung mga Nestogen, Alacta, Bona, lahat sila nandun. Although, bawal yun, siyempre. Although, ano, ini-encourage nila na wag breastfeeding, siyempre, number one daw po yun. Pero sadyang di maiwasan. Uh, tingin ko po, dahil doon sa deal nila, pwede yun, number one. Di ba po, in spite ng kapalit ng pagpapromote mo ng product nila, may kapalit siya na incentives. Ay, depende po. Pag mga doctor, siyempre, mga pwede aircon o kaya airfare papunta sa ibang ano. Depende po sa ano eh. Ano, naririnig ko sa ngayon eh. Executive Order 51 requires health workers to inform mothers about the risks of infant formula. 
breastfeed po kasi ano may melkod naman ni eh. ay bawal sa amin mag ano mag promote ng gatas na hindi galing sa nanay sila na magbibili mag ano na kami mag recommend lang kami na ano gatas kagaya ng Nesto Gen 1. Dep Depende sa ano afford nila. Mayroon ding bumili ng non-HA. Yun. Pero, pinapromote talaga namin yung breastfeeding. Kasi, bawal yun eh. Bawal mag-promote ng gatas. Na, ano, in-motivate naman namin yung nanay sa ano, pag padidi ng kanilang sanggol. Midwives play a crucial role in the promotion of breastfeeding. They are supposed to help babies latch onto their mother's breasts at birth. But that's not what happened in the case of Lera Makyon, a young mother who gave birth at a facility run by midwives in Tagbilaran City. The day after she gave birth, midwives sent her home with a promotional gift bag containing free baby vitamins. They also gave her an infant formula sample for her newborn son. <laughs> After childbirth, Lerma will return to work as an office clerk and has opted to bottle feed with some encouragement from her doctor. No one has explained to her how she could breastfeed and work with support. Lerma's new baby is her second born just 14 months after her first. With two babies being bottle-fed, Lerma will now be spending almost 2,000 pesos a month on infant formula. Money she could have saved or spent on other needs had she chosen to breastfeed. But caught between the promotional efforts of midwives on the one hand and persuasive TV ads on the other, Lerma and her husband believe infant formula is the better option. Advertisement. <laughs> Dali ra maka catch up bitaw kung unsa itugaan. Tuluan. Para pansa. Bata. Advance ja ano. Advance ang iyang. Advance ya. Mas matalino. Millions of Filipinos get their news and information mainly from television, which is filled with advertisements of powdered milk. These women in Mandawe City in Cebu Accept as gospel truth advertisements that say powdered milk makes children intelligent your gifted child, you remember, and speeds up baby's growth. And secret hopes. I'm probably the cause of my pa hatag o substantia sa bata o sa sad ko an projected nga naghimo kang genius. Ayan naman ni Mr. Bumili ng gata. Nagtrabaho ng maigi para makabili ng gatas. The advertisements give mothers the impression that powdered milk can have significant advantages for their babies. Kung bibili ako ng promil, 
Wala kasi akong pera. Kung meron akong pera, bibili ako. Naniniwala ako na ang promil ay pagpatalino ng bata. Nakikita ko kasi sa TV. <laughs> What is happening is that Uh, because milk companies glamorize their products, they give the impression um, to mothers that their milk is insufficient, is uh, of low, poor quality, and that the tinned formula is better. Um, it has become necessary to look at the practices that undermine breastfeeding particularly marketing strategies and tactics of milk companies. You have seen, I'm sure, uh, claims, false health claims from various milk companies um, that purport that um, the particular brands would make children into geniuses. Uh, uh, they show them playing violins and piano. These sorts of false claims are tantamount to Uh, duping the general population into consuming products that can be harmful to children, particularly in environments where we cannot be sure of the quality of water, the, the sanitation, including hygiene, personal hygiene practices uh, in the environments in which these uh, companies are pushing their product. There used to be a very strong monitoring capability in the Department of Health and in other parts of government, which uh, undertook the accountability of ensuring that the code was respected and that advertising was honest and that people were given the kind of information that was correct, including warnings on labeling Uh, that um, allowed people to make an informed choice, uh, that capability, that code monitoring capability has been dismantled. The health department has revised the implementing rules of the milk code, which were drafted in 1986 and are badly in need of updating. The RIRR or EO51 is against advertising and promotions. Uh, in fact, it is against uh, unlawful or immoral advertising and promotions and the penalties or sanctions that we suggested in the RIRR actually were penalties and sanctions for the milk companies. But it is up against the producers of infant formula. The multi-billion peso milk, pharmaceutical and healthcare companies which are opposing these revisions. If commercial information about infant formula will be prohibited, consumers and healthcare professionals will be denied access to important information about a safe, legal product that they might freely choose to use and or recommend. It is important that they receive complete, accurate, balanced information. Parents may feed the wrong product. They may not prepare, store, or feed the product correctly. There are no generic preparation instructions that apply to The new rules provide stricter guidelines on the advertising of infant formula as well as penalties on health professionals who violate them. A very, very small, minuscule percentage of actual mothers actually requiring infant formula rather than breast milk, your honors. But because of the current propaganda, advertisements, promotions, sponsorships, etc., the, actually there is a reverse. It is now practically a, a, a norm that, uh, that uh, doctors or, or even health facilities or even mothers think that infant formula is actually the gold formula. It's an advertisement. I entirely agree, sorry to say this, marami naman talagang milk companies na sobra-sobra ang false advertisement. What has not been disproven, however, is that milk and pharmaceutical companies conduct aggressive marketing strategies that run counter to the law. The misleading advertisements and the use of health workers to promote their products. Somehow pissed off with the marketing strategy is the bribing aspect that happens with the midwives. 
True, there are like travels or some perks for doctors. That's part of the marketing. Ito to talaga yan. Let's say a midwife or a medical practitioner, a caregiver in the nursery. Pag na, do they have these cans or boxes? It is being exchanged. Parang may benefit. Parang merong incentive ang company. Company na pag merong if let's say per box is five pesos or per tin can is ten pesos. So pag nandutub yung bata, meron na kaagad gatas. In an interview conducted with med reps of a milk company, other violations of EO51 were exposed. More often than not, we target private doctors because they provide the high-end products. In the sense that you are only able to push the low-end milk. Our premium brand is the private doctor. We try to put a scientific event for the doctor. We sponsor the doctor who will be the speaker, main player, accommodation, etc. After the seminar, that's the time we have on the basis of your milk product. Is it true that milk companies sponsor the milk in the nursery and that the nurses give it out? Yes, it happened before. You can also sponsor like my job related activities. It's outings, business parties, etc. Um, who do you cover? Basically, doctors, nurses, and midwives. Midwives in the health centers do most of the deliveries. Rosemary Flores is a midwife and a breastfeeding advocate who also runs a feeding center for malnourished children in Mandawe City. She knows that most families will not be able to afford infant formula and that the baby's best chance for survival is breast milk. mga malnourish um, ganun saka mga indigenous children napakain na sila 120 days ng uh, pagkain masustansya Milk companies and their med reps have tried but failed to win her over. Bagong panganak ko last year, nakakatawang. Yung alakta, yung med rep, nagalit sa akin kasi nakabihis daw ng t-shirt na may printang wayat ang anak ko. Sa alak tagad siguro, murang daghan yun sila magkuhan. May lagi na convince kay tumod kay low man yun sila sa wayat o sa Nestle. Anong alak ta, grabe yun rin nag-convince para sila mataas. <laughs> grabe. Ayaw ko. Kanang, yun, magpupunta ng Manila, Davao, ano, yung Baguio, ganun, para sila ang mamasahi. Ano, lahat na expenses kanila. Kung kinukumbinsi talaga nila ako, man. totoo. Ayaw ko niyan kasi parang ano eh, di man na ato ma-importante. Sige, palilihan. Rosemary is a mother herself and is convinced of the benefits of breastfeeding, a belief she passes on to new mothers. There are health workers like Rosemary in other parts of the country. 
hindi ako nag-advertise ng milk. Kahit pupunta dito yung, minsan pupunta ng taga Wyatt, pupunta ng taga Nestle. Kahit sinasabi na hindi, pero minsan meron tayong human rights, so we have to entertain also, di ba? Pero wala talaga, hindi talaga ako nag-advertise nag ng you, you buy this kind of milk, you buy this kind of milk. Inaano ko talaga yung breast milk. Hmm. Bakit may mga uh, nag-advertise ba na gano'n na health worker? No, yung may mga ahente na galing sa infant formula. Nagpupunta sila dito? Pupunta sila dito, pero hindi talaga yung pupunta na kasi ngayon may milk code na tayo eh. Hindi namin ini-entertain in sila. Pero minsan pag pupunta, nag-uusap, tapos pinapaalis ko na. Kasi stricto kami dito sa Tagbilaran City. Eh, iwan ko kung sa iba. Okay ha? Sa Wednesday, pag mag-9 months na siya. At the Tagbilaran City Health Office, doctors and midwives follow EO51 strictly. But they say their strict compliance with the law is more the exception rather than the rule. Nandiyan kami nagtrabaho eh. Nag-implement kami. Ang um, yung sa amin na uh, milk code task force sa city, mahirapan kami kasi pag mayroon kaming na actual na nakakita ng sa aming mga ka-office mate na nag-accept ng giveaways from sa milk representative. So kami, kami ang ano, kami ang awayun kami kanun ay away yun, banghag, uh, kanun may unsaon yun, muna sila estrikto, estrikto, kaayo. Mahirap, kinasakitan yun, kaayo. Klaro pag istorya. <laughs> The Tagbilaran City Health Office covers 15 barangay health centers, but it has no control over health workers in private practice, such as midwives and doctors. It also runs into problems with encouraging mothers to breastfeed longer than six months, encountering the effects of rampant advertising of infant formula. There are 2.5 million Filipino babies born every year. A huge market for milk companies making an estimated 21 billion pesos annually in profits. Profits that go up as the Philippine population increases. And the industry is expanding. When the milk code was first passed in 1986, there were only a handful of infant formula products. Now there are more than 60, including follow-on formulas for infants six months and older. In protecting this market, milk companies are using health workers to promote bottle feeding and spending billions on ads. The country's front line of defense in the promotion of breastfeeding are public health workers. But they are poorly paid. Barangay health workers get only a 200 peso monthly allowance likely targets of milk company promotions such as food, gifts, and other incentives. Advocates say a stronger milk code will protect the public health system from the encroachment of milk and pharmaceutical companies. It is also the support public servants need in their campaign to bring back the country's breastfeeding culture. Breastfeeding alone provides perfect nutrition for young children. Only breast milk prevents infection, optimizes growth, improves intelligence, and protects the mother. As the Philippines struggles to provide health, education, and livelihood for all people, these benefits cannot be overlooked. The National Milk Code must urgently be given teeth to ensure that Filipino children can enjoy these benefits.